Nick is going to talk to us about making SMP work, which yep. sounds like a challenge. The previous presenter threatened bodily harm to me if I tried to sell SNMP. I just want to make sure to see if there's someone around to prevent him or he's out of the room. <laughs> Good. Oh yeah, you're up there, right. I was going to watch. <laughs> um, so my name's Nick and I work at Core Plus. I as New Zealand Telco ISP. Um, I've been doing monitoring for a little while now and um, it's my little hobby horse and I like to make it work well and I don't find as many problems with monitoring as some people do um, but I acknowledge that there's lots of problems. Um, this talk is my personal opinion, I'm pretty opinionated and so uh, if you disagree with me and in particular if you find yourselves going I wrote that piece of software you're a bit complaining about don't physically harm me, tell me why, because I'd really love to know, and it probably has a reason beginning with management. Um, I'm not a PowerPoint person, that's just my, my level of expertise in graphs. Um, basically, I'm here to talk, you're here to check Twitter and heckle me occasionally, I suspect. Uh, let's see. I assume that you guys are using Nagios or some sort of open source monitoring solution. If you're rolling HP OpenView, which costs more than a sports car, great, wonderful, use it. Go use your vendor training. Don't listen to me. I'm full of crap. Um, right. Now, SNMP. Yep, it sucks. It definitely sucks. It's totally useless. So let's use the alternatives. <laughs> See, I work for a telco, which means also an ISP, and we don't have 2,000 servers. We have 2,000 switches and 2,000 routers, and we have 200 servers. So I need to make one monitoring system that monitors everything. And yep, I can write a uh, NRPE plugin, which happily goes and runs on a Red Hat box and happily monitors the status of Apache. Has anyone ported NRPE to Cisco yet? No? OK, so I need to use something other than Nagios Remote Execution. I need to use something that everyone supports. Your UPS, your PDU, your temperature sensors, Everything runs SNMP. Even your servers run SNMP. So that's what I would like to use. There are proprietary solutions out there. That's a lie. There are actually other solutions out there. ABC Widget Vendor makes a switch and they have an ABC Widget wonderful monitoring solution. And it will monitor the ABC Widget products no problem at all. When it comes to monitoring the other stuff in your network that does, isn't made by ABC Widgets, they say, we also support SNMP, and they monitor it badly with SNMP, so everyone uses SNMP, let's just use it. Let's get over that now. Uh, what is SNMP? Um, I'm going to assume most of you have actually know that it means simple network management protocol or monitoring protocol or something along those lines. It actually doesn't matter. But there are three versions, and that's what's useful to know. Version 1, very simple, very basic. Um, it's inefficient, but that's not too much of a major problem especially on these days. It was, it's an ancient protocol. It's got very basic security. If you're doing your monitoring over the internet or over an untrusted network, you are going to have a bad time. There are evil people out there that will packet trace and just look at the packets that are flying through and go, oh look, a community string. And they will use that. SNMT version 2C. The C is important but not really. It was back then, but it's not anymore. There's no version 2, there's version 2C only. Basically, 2 said, hey, there's a whole lot of problems with the inefficiencies of version 1. Let's just make it more efficient. We'll keep the same security, because security's never a problem. There's no evil people on the internet. Um, then version 3 came along. Basically, it's the same as version 2, except they've got a whole lot better security. SNMP is a communications protocol. It's not a monitoring system. It's nothing like that. All it is is about getting data and occasionally setting data and doing some event notifications. You get single values, and you, you do whatever you want with them. Uh, right, tools. If you're doing SNMP stuff, there are basically three tools you want to use. Well, really only two, actually. There's SNMP get, which allows you to read a particular data value. There's SNMP set. You can set data. You can set values. You can do very crazy things with set. You can actually make changes to your network with set. You probably don't want to. SNMP is not great security and you don't want it so that if somebody goes and gets into a really simply configured switch 
and is then able to say get your community string that you're using and is then able to say set various authentication protocols on every other switch in your network, that's going to end badly. So except in certain circumstances, I just don't use set. There are certain circumstances where you will, but you'll come to that eventually. SNMP walk is your friend. Um, I said SNMP sucks because vendors make it suck. SNMP walk is your way of fighting back. Basically, SNMP, what SNMP has done, the OIDs and an SNMP is done as a tree. SNMP walk allows you to see the entire values there. <coughs> ah, right, now what about these data values? They're all represented with that awful number up there. And that actually translates into sys uptime from memory. Oh yes it does, there it is. Um, so you've got these, internally it's all represented with numbers and there's some text for humans to read. Um, the, human, the, the text is useful, but I would suggest whenever you're putting anything in anywhere, I want to monitor this data value. Use the numbers because that comes to my next complaint, which is why SNMP sucks, which is MIBS. MIBS MIBs are like a cookbook and they're recipes, but they're recipes written in a foreign language. So they theoretically make things useful, but really don't. Um, with the exception of some vendors, it's, uh, MIB files that vendors generate for their systems are badly done. Sometimes they won't even pass. So you can put them into your monitoring system and say, I've got this wonderful GUI which allows me to see the MIBs and read MIB files. And you put it in and it just says, MIB file doesn't pass. So what you need to do is you go back to your vendor and you complain. You say, oh, these MIB files don't pass. And they say, what's a MIB file? <laughs> and you say, you know, because your product, you sold me it. You said, yes, yes, it supports SNMP. And they said, yeah, it does. It responds on SNMP to sys uptime. But your device does more than just be upright. <laughs> yeah, so MIB files will tell you what the, what, how to, what the numbers are and what they mean. They're text files, that's basically the description of sysup time. Um, what you're interested in here is a description. But here's a little tip. There are, all the MIB files are being passed and thrown on the web. And if you just Google what you're looking for, you will find various websites, Cisco has a wonderful tool if you're dealing with Cisco products that allow you to go, I want to know how to get the packet, the number of bytes transmitted over an interface and you find that you want IF octets and you then find that that corresponds to a big long number. Um, don't be afraid of looking at MIB files and just scanning through them, finding what you're looking for, e.g. Where am I looking? Sys uptime, that's what I'm looking for. And then Googling that and finding the OID. You can, in theory, if you're really bored, say that sys uptime is represented as the third number after system. And at the top, system is represented as the first number, so it'll be 1.3 and of MIB2. So then we go look up MIB2, we find MIB2, we find a long number. Oh, dear God, there are computer programs that do this. They're much better. Don't do it by hand. Uh, unless, of course, you get a MIB file from a vendor that basically doesn't even go to the root. It floats and it will not pass ever and it's not on the web, in which case you actually get our pen and paper and you trace it by hand. Uh, right, so we now know why SNMP sucks and, why, and how you can not use it very well. Let's see if we can actually do things with SNMP. Um, when monitoring stuff with SNMP for the first time, you've got a brand new device that does something and you, you're in charge of the monitoring system, you're told, we need to monitor this because if it goes down or if it doesn't do what it's supposed to do, then customers are going to complain. Don't go and check the production system and don't walk the production system to see what values you can get. Uh, there's a particular vendor, North American large network vendor, who produces a weird little device that they bought from another company. Um, but they slapped their badge on it, so that's why I hate them. Um, and I discovered, much to my demise, when I walked this dev production device sitting in path, that in the wrong way it crashes the SNMP daemon. That's not bad, it just means monitoring breaks. But if you walk it in a particularly bad way, it reboots the device and takes down the internet. That was not a pleasant day for me. So when you're playing with devices and trying to read them off SNMP, please do it in the lab. Please, if you're going to say, I know, I've discovered this device also does, thank you, also does um, 
Another monitoring thing, temperature checks. I can also read the temperature of it. Go grab the lab one or go do it at 3 a.m. Don't do it in the middle of the day. Your boss will not thank you. So I've got this new device. First thing I need to do is ask the vendor for the appropriate MIB files. This tells you one of two things. This tells you either that they actually know what SNMP is or they don't. And if they say, we don't have MIB files for it, mm, that's going to be a little bit more fun. Um, really handy before you purchase this new piece of equipment to actually go and ask for the MIB files before you've bought it. If they say, we don't have MIB files, then attempt to convince your purchasing people to go find the alternate, more expensive product and buy that one. Um, ask the vendor for performance and availability monitoring documentation. <laughs> there is some. For some of the big name vendors, they actually do it, and it's not too bad, but nobody else does. Um, but it's useful to ask for it, because if there's a small chance you might actually get it, it makes your life a lot easier, because it basi basically they tell you, you need to monitor this stuff, this stuff, and this stuff. Um, so if you don't have these wonderful um, performance and availability monitoring documentation, then grip the MIB files for useful stuff. If you want to know what the temperature of the device is, just grip for the word temperature. Look through it, find the OID you're looking for, that text string, then look it up. Um, if you cannot, if you don't have a MIB file, then your last resort is just to SNMP walk the entire thing, dump it to a text file, then go through later and look for values you're hoping to find. Ideally, you're currently running at 58 degrees Celsius. You SNMP walk the whole thing and then you look for any values that read 58 degrees and then you wait five minutes for the temperature to change and then you look through and go which values are now changed. We have done that. Um, if you're trying to do this for bike counters you're in a major lot of trouble but <laughs> yeah. Um, what am I up to now? Um, oh yeah. So most, uh, we're all sysadmins so we deal with servers that have quad core Xeons or six core Xeons, they're all dual this and 10,000k SCSI disks and stuff like that. Um, here's a tip, that network switch you're running, if you are very lucky the CPU inside it is actually a Pentium 1, if you're lucky. They are slow as hell and that's where the SNMP is implemented. But be careful because not just SNMP is there. There is a certain manufacturer of what is essentially a uh, the telco version of of your ATA, which means that they take the POTS line and convert it to SIP. Um, that device is single threaded and when you SNMP walk it and it takes five minutes to walk, no calls can be made or received for all the customers that are hanging off it. Yeah, so do it in the lab. Remember what I said? Don't do it in production devices. Um, it's okay because you don't have to walk it all the time, you just walk it to find the values you're wanting and then you go find the values and it answers within a couple of milliseconds and no one notices that the phone takes more than a couple of milliseconds to ring. Uh, right. Oh, Google. Um, if, you have, if you're stuck trying to modify the SNMP stuff, just Google it. Somebody's already dealt with this before, hopefully, and they will be able to help you out. Nagios. It is an okay monitoring system and it supports SNMP. <laughs> Thank you. It does support SNMP. I had an operations manager who said that Nagios doesn't have native SNMP support. He was technically true. Nagios doesn't have native anything support. It doesn't mon natively monitor anything. It needs plugins for everything. So it does have SNMP support. Check SNMP is useful. Um, why would we want to use Nagios using SNMP? Because we also use graphing systems and they use SNMP. So if we can make our monitoring system use the same data values as a graphing system, it means two different systems to pull the device. Um, uh, sorry, I'm just catching up on where I'm up to. Um, Another tip for Nagios is when you are when you are monitoring a device that has say a thousand of something, a thousand interfaces, if you write, if you have Nagios do 1000 check SNMP checks, it's going to be slow because it basically goes out and says for interface 1 please tell me whether you're up. Good. For interface 2 please tell me whether you're up. 
When you've got a whole lot of something on one device that you're monitoring, a smarter way is to make a thousand passive checks which don't actually do anything in one active check. The active check goes and says, right, I need to monitor all thousand interfaces. So I will pull down the entire 1,000 interfaces table in one giant hit, and then I will submit 1,000 passive checks. It makes Nagios run faster, and that poor little CPU doesn't have to sit there and answer 1,000 individual queries. Mm. Right. The SNMP vendor I have chosen to name and shame. This is a vendor who has been producing SNMP for a long, long time. Um, it's had lots of eyes work on it, it's, had lot, it's been deployed in lots of devices and it really could do a lot better. It's a single threaded system and it supports external checks and it blocks on external checks. And unfortunately, don't throw fruit, but it's Linux's SNMP daemon. <laughs> so it is an okay SNMP daemon. It works, but you have to make sure you handhold it. As I said, if you try and, for example, write an SNMP module that you can slap into Net SNMPD that say checks that returns the status of a file system, and that file system is hung, the check will hang. If the check hangs, SNMPD will hang. If SNMPD will hang, then it will not answer any queries and it will look like your box just died. Um, if there's any students here who are going, gee, I'm about to start my third year and I'm looking for a really cool project I can work on that's really sexy and really hot, um, check in the mobile FOSS miniconf next door. But if you want to actually achieve some really cool stuff, then um, rewriting Net SNMPD and making it multi-threaded and making it so it doesn't hang would just be an awesome project. And, um, and making it so it detects new file systems without having to be restarted. And make it so it detects new file systems without having to restart. Make it so it doesn't have a dependency on a huge number of MIBs, and if you don't have those MIBs in the system, it doesn't spit out 10,000 errors to your syslog daemon. Um, and so, yeah, I'm supposed to end a, end a talk with a call to arms, so please somebody rewrite it, because I'm too busy trying to fix everything else to rewrite Net SNMPD. Uh, questions or rotten fruit, if I can duck? Oh yeah! <laughs> Watch him! Do not give him anything heavy! <laughs> yeah, just go ahead. <laughs> no, don't worry, I'm not going to hit you in public. <laughs> if I don't turn up tomorrow, you know who to look for. Right. Uh, so, you, the one thing you haven't mentioned is SNMP traps. Yes. Uh, mainly because I only got uh, 20 minutes and I could spend the rest of the day talking about trapping and good ideas and bad ideas with it. Um, if I've got a minute, how long have I got? One minute. One minute. If I've got one minute, <laughs> wonderful. If I've got one minute, um, my humble opinion on traps is that traps are useful for making your monitoring system work faster. They are not a replacement for polling. You should poll everything you care about and you should let the traps update Nagios quicker. Um, yeah, that's my 15 second version of track discussion. Hi, um, you've discovered a lot of the undocumented features, shall we say, of various vendors SNMP on various devices. Is there any concerted effort to put a wiki somewhere and some kind of centralised place where we can just all contribute and make their lack of documentation irrelevant? Yeah, there's this company in um, the US that are doing a good job at actually putting together all the sources of information, making it immediately accessible. Um, I think Google is the name. Um, unfortunately, no, that's a, that's a very valid question and I apologise for being a little bit rude there. But yes, no, um, that would be very good. Um, the short answer is that monitoring isn't sexy. Um, monitoring is a sinkhole of money and time and so most companies don't spend an amount of time and effort into monitoring, so therefore there isn't a good community around it. Um, but I believe somebody's trying to organise a great community, and hey, that sounds like a good place to put it as well. So. Yeah. 